Alrighty. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing, uh, or I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Welcome to class. This is uh, grade five and six English class. And as some of you may know, my name is Ethan, and I'll be your English mentor. So without further ado, here's a bit about me. So I am in grade 11. So uh, at this age, you might know uh, when you get to this age, there's a lot of work to do, so I'll be only uh, doing bi-weekly uh, classes, so once every two weeks. Uh, some things I like are playing badminton, reading, drawing, the color blue, animals, and fruits. And Ryan, we are not doing a book today, but something called a quizzes. Have you heard of that? It's also like a gamified uh, kind, of sh uh, kind of game. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, some things that I dislike are bugs and loud surprises. So if you're around me and you make a loud surprise sometimes, you can see me jump. <laughs> so there's a fun fact about me. Um, and also I have an older brother that is in university right now. So that's nice. And finally, I've been teaching English at Future Ed for almost a year now. So that's really nice. Uh, does anyone? want to yes. introduce themselves. Emma, would you like to say anything interesting about yourself? I'm Emma and I'm the great spy. I like playing I like drawing, play basketball, volleyball, and I like, um, I like bicycling. My favorite color is pink, and I like animals, animals, and well, that's mostly it. Okay, that's so cool, Emma. I love how you do lots of sports, and I also like the color pink as well. It's a nice color. Uh, Ryan, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, my name is Ryan and I grade seven. I like doing badminton, um, soccer, like cards, mm -hmm. things. What I don't like is kind of like just um, doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I understand like homework, that can get a bit stressful, right? <laughs> um, how about you, Aliyah? Anything that you'd like to share with us? Um, my name is Alaya, and I like to play badminton too. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Looks oh. like we have lots of people who like badminton. Uh, would you like to add anything else? Oh yeah, I'm grade 6. Okay, cool. Grade 6. Okay. Uh, how about you, Yang? Um, I am 11 years Okay, you're in grade, uh, no, sorry, you're 11 years old? I am 11 years old, and I am in grade 6. Cool, you're in grade 6. Alrighty. Uh, what about you, Chloe? Okay, you have no mic, don't worry. Uh, you can just type it in the chat. Uh, what about you, Melinda? Anything fun you'd like to share with us? My name is Melinda. I like painting. Cool, what do you like to paint? Like, do you like to paint nature or anything specific? I like color. Mm -hmm. You like colors. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Um, and I believe we got to everyone. Okay, so let's move on to our lesson, which is about antastic teamwork. So as you can probably guess, this is about ants and how they work together. And the article is by Mary Jewell. So let's get to it. 
give me a second. Do, do, do. Okay, so who would like to start by reading this first paragraph? Any volunteers? No? Quiet bunch today. Uh, okay, Austin, would you like to start reading this first paragraph? Or, okay, Emma, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Austin, you can go first. Summer day, you, you, your family, and friends are in the park enjoying the warm weather. You play some soccer, a little frisbee, then settle down to a delicious picnic. You open the food only to discover that ants have found it first. They're crawling everywhere. You, you try to brush them off but it's too late. These small insects are often seen as a nuisance, nuisance or pest. Unwelcome to any gathering or home, but they are actually fantastic creatures that are lot are a lot more complicated than natural appear, appearance. Behind the chaos is a careful organized organization of roles and responsibility. Let's dig a little deeper to learn more about them. Alrighty, thank you, Austin. So this paragraph is introducing uh, ants by giving you a little visualization of you and your family that's enjoying a nice picnic at the park. And then you see a nuisance. So that's another word for something annoying. So that is ants. They've gotten to your food already, so that can be annoying, especially if you've seen them um, like eating your food or taking, starting to take them away. But actually, behind what you see is a careful organization of roles and responsibi responsibilities of these ants. So let's take a look at what this is. Uh, Emma, you had your hand, hand raised. Would you like to uh, read this next paragraph? Yeah. Ants okay. have been around for millions of years. They were found in fossil over 100 million, million years old. They are a type of insect. An easy way to identify an insect is based on the number of legs they have. All insects have six legs. Legs. There are over 12,000 different species of ants. Across, across these species, they, there are also there are lots of different shapes, sizes, and appearance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Emma. That was very excellent reading. Uh, also very good pronunciation as well. So this is talking about more some facts about ants, such as that they've been around for millions of years. Uh, so that just gives, goes to show how long that ants have, have been living on Earth. And that uh, it gives a fact by saying that they were found in fossils that were over 100 million years old. So that was a very long time ago, right? Um, something else here, it says that an easy way to identify an insect is that they have six legs, right? So if you count spiders, spiders are not insects since they have eight legs, right? And across, there are also a lot of species of ants, um, over 12,000 to be exact, actually. So that is a lot of ants. You may think ants are all just tiny and beady and black, kind of like this one over here, but there are actually a lot of kinds uh, that have like different shapes, sizes, and appearances. Okay. Anyone else would like to continue reading this paragraph?
Uh, how about... Uh, good question, Emma. What species are spiders? I honestly do not know. I think they have a category on their own, like a category of spiders and then uh, different species also branching out from that, like how ants are also having uh, different species. Uh, uh, Ryan, I've, <laughs> I think I've kind of heard of that before. Yeah, so it sounds something like that. Okay, uh, Melinda, would you like to continue reading over here? Sorry, I can't. No? Okay. Uh, can you give it a try? They are the harmless but smell horse mm -hmm. and uh just radish of sour small when scratch the fire and have a scar regulation for their steer in Central America. They are ants called bullying ants. They are called this because their sting is so painful. It is like getting short turtle and have large dish like has that can be used to block headings for getting into the nest was our only squash the surface when it comes to the different types of ants as there are so many all right thank you so much melinda thank you for reading okay so emma can you tell me what this paragraph was about just a general kind of summary this, uh, this paragraph is about like types of ants yes and what they are for Mm -hmm, exactly. So this is kind of listing a whole bunch of kinds of ants. For instance, there's the harmless but smelly ants that uh, give out a sour smell when they're squashed. And then there's fire ants that uh, are very scary because of their sting. They have a reputation because of that. So a reputation is like a general kind of, uh, the general opinion of something. So the general opinion of fire ants is that they're scary for their sting. Uh, another kind of ant is bullet ants, and their sting is actually so painful, it's almost like getting shot, so that's why they're called, they're called that. Um, red ants are carnivores, but they also eat vegetables sometimes, mostly eat meat. Okay, Emma, that is a very interesting fact. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Uh, and then over here it says, turtle ants have very large dish-like heads, so they can block predators from getting into their nest. So that is an interesting kind of ant as well. And since, as you can recall, there are like over 12,000 different species of ants, that is only listing or scratching the surface of how many different kinds of ants there are, since there's so many. Okay, um, hmm. Yang, can you continue reading in this paragraph, please? Which one? Uh, starting here. Ants are impressive in many ways, but especially in their strength. A single ant can carry 50 times its body weight. That would be like 50 pounds child packing up to 2,500 pounds. That's more than uh, the avenge, avenge weight of a moose or beast. Bison. Uh, bison. However, 
When ants work together, their feats are even more incredible. Fire ants has been making making the large craft made of their own bodies during floods in the south of the U.S. Another species of ants, army ants, are used their body to create hanging temporary nests where they can protect themselves, raising their young. You can see these hanging structures in Central American forests. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yang. Alrighty, so this paragraph, uh, can you tell me, Yang, can you tell me what the general gist of this paragraph is saying? Mm, it's saying about some, uh, how incredible our ants is, our ants are. Yes, exactly, you got it. So this is talking about the strengths and how ants are so impressive. So it's giving lots of examples. For instance, an ant can carry 50 times its body weight. So that would be like a 50 pound chalup picking up 2,500 pounds. That is a lot. I myself am about 50 kilograms. So me, imagine me picking up a bison or like a moose. That seems almost impossible, but is actually possible by ants. So that is also very impressive. Uh, however, it says not only are ants impressive by themselves, but when they work together, their feats are even more incredible. So a feat, you can guess, is like something amazing that you can do. Like if you can climb a mountain, that's not something that everyone can do or have the motivation to do. So if you ever, if you're able to climb to the top of a mountain, that would be called an amazing feat. Okay. Uh, some Another example is that fire ants have been seen making large rafts when there's floods. So they can actually make their bodies float because uh, their bodies have like, uh, they're able to retain air that helps them float in water. So when floods come, they can uh, combine as a group and kind of make a living raft of their bodies so they can survive when that happens. Uh, in other species, like army ants, as you can see in this picture, they will actually create hanging nests to protect themselves and their young. So that is really interesting. See if I can zoom in here. You can see this is actually made up a whole bunch of ants. Okay. Alrighty, who would like to read the next paragraph? Starting here. Okay, um, how about you, Ray? Or you don't have a mic. Okay, um, how about you, uh, Alaya? Um, can I not read it? Ah, uh, why not? <laughs> Just give it a try. Oh, okay. Starting here. Is this the truth? Mm -hmm. That ants makes inspire people to learn more about how they're creating them. There are engineers. Engineers who study ants to learn more about the the details 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 of their structures. They're studying these structures true to help hopeful Missy mimic make mm -hmm. their in the form of robots. Or bridges. Burger. Mm -hmm. Bridges. Okay, thank you, Laya. Very nice try. Uh, so, this paragraph is talking about how the structures that ants make can actually inspire people to make them or create them, since they can actually make living structures out of their own bodies. So, these engineers who study ants uh, need to get to learn more about how they make these structures and Hopefully they can mimic them so that they're nice and sturdy to make like things like robots or bridges or any kind of other structure. Okay. Uh -huh. Henry, would you like to read the next paragraph? Hmm? 
No? Okay, uh, how about you, Ryan? Um, starting from where? Uh, starting over here. <clears throat> the key behind the ant's amazing feet are communication and organization. Ants are a social animal species, meaning that meaning they live together in communities containing thousands of ants. When if these communities or colonies, ants are organized into specific groups, just like you might be divided into teams to complete a larger task. Ants organize themselves into teams. Each team has a specific role. Some ants will take care of the brood. Those ants are still developing into full-grown ants. Other ants will defend the colony against attackers. Every colony has what's known as the queen ant. She makes up her own teams as the producer of eggs. Working together, each ant, each ant has a role in keeping the colony alive and well, as well as an individual ant is on their own. Together, they are powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ryan. And can you tell me, Ryan, what is like the main idea of this paragraph? So, like, can you give me a small summary of what you've just read? Uh, pretty much like how they, how organized their team are. Like their teams, like yes, exactly. So, uh, like you were saying, how they're organized, as uh, seen here, like their organization and how they communicate and work as a team, right? So, as you've read, ants are a social animal species, so they live together and they work together, and some are organized into specific groups or roles in the colony. So, uh, just like how you might be divided in teams at school to like. Uh, complete specific tasks, ants are organized into specific or have specific roles as well. So some will take care of the brood or the brood, sorry. Uh, that would be the ants that have that they're like baby ants that have not been that are not adult ants yet. Uh, other ants will defend the colony like some ants like invaders or other ants from other colonies that might invade their colony or their ant nest, and there are other ants that also scavenge for food uh, and then bring back to their ant nest. So it's kind of like a working, it's kind of like a family, but a lot larger. It's all of these ants that are working together to uh, have their colony work effectively. And so uh, that actually helps them survive better. Uh, Emma, would you like to continue reading here? Just because ants are strong, it doesn't mean that they don't take care of one of another. another. In some species, ants have, have been seen to display self -be selfless behavior. A, spe a species commonly known as are paramedic paramedic ants will go on raid raids to capture prey to eat during these raids raids mm -hmm. ants will get injured rather than leaving them behind other ants would will bring the hurt ant back to the colony where they can recover and get better. This way, they can rejoin other ants in these raids. Paramedic ants are just one example of ant species that, that look out for one another. They do this because they know that they are stronger together than individually. They, that is why they will risk their own lives to save their nestmates. Those ants who belong to 
the same colony. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Emma. All right, so this paragraph is mainly focusing on a kind of species of ants known as paramedic ants. And going to specific details, it says that they will go on raids to capture prey to eat, or like uh, general terms to get, uh, or like to hunt for food. And during these raids, the ants will get injured. It's kind of like uh, going to war kind of, but out in nature or doing it so naturally. And so since some ants will get injured, it's not like ants, the other ants or fellow ant mates will be like, oh, well, it's your fault for getting injured. I'm just going to leave you. Instead, they will actually help the other ants and bring them back to the colony so that they can recover and get better, which is really nice. Uh, what are raids? So a raid is kind of like, uh, you can think of it as like uh, stealing food or getting food in a way that kind of uh, takes it away from somebody else. Okay, so like if ants raid your food counter, that means they'll just go into your food counter and steal it away so that they can eat it themselves. Yeah, exactly, like Ryan said, it's like robbery, right? Okay, um, Austin, would you like to continue reading this final paragraph, please? Okay, Ryan, what about you? How about you? Can you finish it finish it up, please? And where? Start from Over where? Here. Oh, whether they are lifting something 50 times their length or saving nest mate, ants are an incredible animal. Maybe next time ants invade your picnic, take some time to look at then watch how they touch each other to communicate and of course lift heavy piece of your food mm -hmm. and that's the end of the article alrighty so let's take a look at some questions that I'm going to ask you and let's see if you how much you can uh, say remember okay so first question how can we identify something as an insect So try to think, how would you classify an insect? Or what's its characteristic? Anything? Emma, what do you think? So like, how would you classify an insect? Like, how would you recognize one? I recognize them by their legs. Yeah. All insects have six Sorry, legs. I, I couldn't get the legs. Okay, it's alright. <laughs> Don't worry. And yes, Brian, if they have six legs, then it is an insect. Okay, uh, next question. According to this article, what makes ants so impressive? So try to think, what makes an ant impressive? Yang, you have your mic unmuted. Would you like to add anything or say anything? So what do you think makes an ant impressive according to this article? Yeah, exactly. Like Ryan said in the chat, that they could move things heavier than themselves. Right, so going back to the article, to do ants are impressive in many ways especially in their strength right so they can carry 50 times its body weight which is also very cool uh, they can stack on each other to create anything when face danger yes i like that <laughs> thank you emma um so as you can see in this picture they've kind of created a living nest or a temporary nest so it's like a structure that they can protect themselves in anything else 
Austin, Chloe, what do you guys think? Anything? You can type in the chat if you want. No? Okay. Uh, so other things is that they're because of their large numbers, since like there are actually a lot of factors that go into uh, large numbers and they have a better chance of survival, uh, such as that so the key behind the ants, here it says that the key behind the ants' amazing feats are communication and organization. And since that they're split into like specific groups and have specific tasks to do, the ants aren't o as overwhelmed to their specific, like, to do work, like uh, taking care of the young or like the brood or going out to hunt for food, right? Yes, like Emma said, they take care of each other like a family. Mm -hmm. That is also nice. Anything else would anyone like to add? No? Okay. Uh, let's get back in. I've got a mini lesson or a list of more types of ants that you may have heard of before. So in the article, we mentioned fire ants, which are like one of the most dangerous ant types because of their painful bites and they they produce a toxin that's kind of flavoredish like pepper if you've ever heard of pepper spray it's very like uh what's it called it's very irritable to your uh to your body and it can be very painful if you ever come across them uh that would not be a very pleasant experience right so another kind is carpenter ants and like its name it burrows in wood, so unlike most ants that burrow in the ground or in dirt, carpenter ants, they specialize in wood, and uh, you can find them in like dead logs or trees, sometimes wooden structures, so anything that's made out of wood, you'll probably see these ants burrow into them, and if it's human made, that would be a little unfortunate, because they can actually destroy wooden structures. Another kind of ant are flying ants. Uh, who here has heard of flying ants before, or maybe seen them before? I do. Mm -hmm. Emma does. Okay. Anyone else? No. Okay. Uh, Emma, where have you seen or heard of flying ants before? Just curious. I have them in my backyard. It's very annoying. And in my book, they in my book. Insect book, which I barely read. Okay, interesting. So you've seen them in your backyard and you've read about them before? Right, so as you probably know, they actually grow wings during mating season. So this is just a general kind of broad category. It could be any kind of ant that grows wings and that's uh, to find mates and then uh, kind of start a life on their own. And then another kind of ant that we've also mentioned before is house ants that give off a nasty odor when they're killed. Uh, these ants do not sting or bite, but they do like to go into houses, as the name suggests, because like of the warm uh, climate, you know, it's climate controlled, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's like nice and moist, it's a nice environment for ants, which kind of attracts these to go into houses. So they can be a pest sometimes. Another ant, you may have seen them before in like uh, pavement cracks, you may have seen like uh, dirt piles in your pavement cracks. These are the most common in the United States and yeah, you may have seen them before. You've seen them in your own backyard? Yeah, <laughs> me too. Like you can see them crawling around in the grass or on the pavement or maybe on the sidewalk, right? And last night, there are ghost ants. I've actually never seen these before. Miranda says, I think my school has a lot of big flying ants around the sand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because like that might be when like the ants are mating. Like that's when they grow wings actually. Okay. And then going back to these ghost ants, they're called these because they have a translucent body. That means you can actually see through part of it. 
and if you're lucky and you see it, you might actually see the food that it's eaten inside. <laughs> and another interesting fact is that they are related to house ants because they also release a stench when they are squished. <laughs> okay, um, any questions here? Nope? Okay, let's go to film vocabulary. So who would like to read these aloud? Ray, can you read these uh, definitions aloud, please? Um, nuisance. Mm -hmm. Something or someone that annoys you or causes trouble for you. Mm -hmm. Chaos. Lack of order. Reputation. The general opinion that people have about something slash someone. Beat. An action of great skill or strength. Brood. Mm -hmm. the, the young of certain animals, such as birds. Alrighty, thank you. That was also very nice reading. Okay, uh, let's do some connections. So here are the vocabulary words, and let's try to connect them to what we think represents these uh, words from these pictures. Uh, Emma? The second first one is brood. Is the, mm -hmm. first, the first one is feet. Mm -hmm. Very good. The uh, third one this is, one? yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's chaos. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. and the last one is nuisance. Nuisance? Mm -hmm. And this one, last one, is? Mutation. Yes, very good, Emma. Nice job. Okay, uh, now I've got a little activity just to see how well you can put these words into a sentence. Here's a poll. I've launched it just now, so you can go ahead and answer that. I'll give you about, like, a minute. I've got four responses so far. I'll give about 30 more seconds. And Ryan, it's not a Quizlet. It's something called a Quizzes. It's like Kahoot, but a bit more gamified, but not quite as blooked. So we'll see how you guys like it. Okay, and I am going to end this in Three, two, one, stop. Okay, here are your results. <clears throat> Let's take a look at question one. So, the Eiffel Tower is a great blank of engineering. Can anyone tell me why the answer is feet? No? Okay. So, feet... Oh, okay. Go ahead, Emma. Also, the Eiffel Tower has a great, uh, great feat of engineering because it is, it's, it's built really stable because it's built in the 19s or something and it's still, it's still standing there right now and it's not tilted. And another 
thing is that they they had great patience because they had it to make years years of hard working to make to build it and the colors they chose they chose the darkest at the bottom and lightest at the top so it will make it taller mm -hmm. i like your thinking emma like how you thought about all the different aspects of how they engineered or thought of making the structure of the eiffel tower right like since Eiffel Tower is still standing and it's still a very beautiful structure that many tourists go to visit every year. It's a wonderful feat of engineering or like a very big kind of uh, accomplishment made by engineers, right? Okay, next question. Number two, chicks are fully grown after three months where blank begin to break up. So this one kind of stumped most people or a lot of people more? The answer is broods, right? Let's go back to our vocabulary uh, uh, definitions, right? So a brood is the young of certain animals like birds, especially birds if you look it up in the dictionary. So I think most of you were a bit uh, confused by the, uh, the spelling, but the broods is the correct answer there. Number three, the company has a blank for quality. This would be reputation, not repetition. You may have to look a bit closer at the uh, spelling. It's not repetition. A bit trick there. Okay. Number four, snow and ice have caused blank on the roads. It's not safety. Think about it. If it's a snowy winter day and the roads are slippery, that would not make anything safe, right? <laughs> exactly. Small. Uh, sad face <laughs> that would be chaos chaos or like a lack of order because lots of slippery roads that can create lots of uh car accidents and that would not be good and finally i forgot my umbrella what a blank it's not what a cheer because that would be the complete opposite you wouldn't say hooray i forgot my umbrella on a sunny or not a sunny on a rainy day <laughs> right you would get all wet so that would be a nuisance it's not quite like chaos not lack of order but more like something that's annoying you right so that would be a nuisance okay and now we're going to do a video or watch a video now and for those who do not like to watch bugs I would suggest you looking some somewhere else than your screen because this can get a bit creepy crawly. Okay, you've been warned. <laughs> the army ant. This may look like a ball of a million individuals, but make no mistake, the colony acts as one. A superorganism with a sensory system of two million antennae. A skeleton made from the living bodies of workers. A defense system of soldier ants, ready to act at any sign of danger. A digestive system processing piles of food deep inside. Even a coordinated system for dealing with all the waste. These are insects that, by working together, transcend individual size. The colony can search the entire jungle and flush out its wildlife. Each day, it sends out a silent probe into the forest in quest of food. It doesn't use scouts like other ants. Instead, a vast search party pushes into virgin territory. seeking out the signs of anything alive.
They spread out along a 10 meter front, sweeping across the forest floor. To find prey, the ants must first touch it. The irony is that this, the most successful hide-and-seek player in the forest, is almost completely blind. It distinguishes the living only by their movement. As long as an animal remains still, it is safe. But the slightest twitch will give it away. Within seconds, the prey is pinned down. Within minutes, it's torn apart at its joints. The more the prey struggles, the more the ants engage. Right across the raid front, prey of all sizes are driven from their hiding places. Even wasps must abandon their homes when the ants arrive. Everything alive in the path of the raiders, overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Okay, so what did everyone think about that? Anything? The Any comments? to say yeah exactly like Emma said that was super cool yeah I definitely agree it's really cool how although these ants are super small and like mostly they can't fly they work together really really well right and as you can as you've seen in that video Brian says it's disgusting yeah I definitely agree with that too <laughs> um, ants can like almost invade everywhere and capture nearly anything that's in its path that it can distinguish as, an, as something alive so you probably won't see this in real life in your everyday life but like things in places like the amazon rainforest or in forests that are like all, all over the world ants are hunting right and they're like hunting anything that they can find that uh are like eatable or food right <laughs> okay so now um i have a reader's response it's like a reflection activity ryan says ants equals bad okay so that's your opinion i see um we don't all like to like ants i do not really like ants either but i think they're really interesting okay now, going back to this, um, instead of answering these out loud, I'd like you to answer these quest questions by written form. So, I'll be putting this link in the chat so that you can answer them. Okay, so the first question is, think of animals that work together to survive, and how are these animals similar to ants? So that one, I'd like to focus, I'd like you to focus on that and like write at least two sentences, okay? Um, the second question is, the article mentions many of the abilities of ants. If you were an ant, which of the ants from the article would you choose to be and why? So would you be like a fire ant? Or if you're like Ryan who does not like ants, you can say why you would rather not be an ant, <laughs> okay? Just anything, uh, just state your opinions because I would like to hear from you and this would be a nice practice for you to uh, refine your writing skills. Okay. Uh, it's 6.21 right now so I'll give you about three minutes if that is enough time. If not, you can complete it after we're done this lesson today. And in the meantime, while we're writing, I'll get the quizzes set up.
Let's see the results. Looks like Emma is the top scorer. Oh, I missed it. Okay. Congratulations to Emma, Ray, and Ryan. Give everyone, everyone give them a big round of applause. Yay. Alrighty, okay, let's see if um Okay, I guess not. Alrighty, I guess that concludes today's lesson. I hope y'all enjoyed learning about something new about ants, and I will see you guys in two weeks. Alrighty, bye everyone. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye, Emma. <laughs>